It's time for another one-off rebuild and for the first time ever we're heading over to Turkey. We're going to be managing Fenerbahce over the course of five seasons to try and rebuild them. It's getting close to a decade since they last won a league title so we'll try to fix that as well as making ourselves an actual European force and maybe even win a European competition. So let's run the intro and get this rebuild started. Hi everyone, Jake here. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to another one-off rebuild. And as mentioned, today's team is going to be none other than Fenerbahce. A lot of you guys had recommended Fenerbahce in the comments or at least a Turkish rebuild and I might do another one in the future. But right now we're all focused on Fenerbahce and trying to take them back to the top of the Turkish divisions because as you can see they haven't won it since 2014 and although they were runners up last year and third place the year before still no Super League title in their recent history. If we're looking at cup competitions too it's been a while since they've won them and they've not really got too much going on in terms of European competition success so maybe we can even fix that but over the course of five seasons it's going to be pretty tough and the main reason is due to the financial situation at the club. Yes we have 40 million pounds in the overall balance and 10 million pounds to spend that's awesome but there is a debt of around 200 million pounds to try and pay off. Usually when you're rebuilding a club like this you don't get given too much in the transfer funds every window because they'll pay a big chunk of this off every time they make some money so that might be a little bit of an issue. Another big thing about Fenerbahce they are lacking any kind of facilities. I mean training facilities are okay as are their youth and junior coaching but realistically it's not great for a club of their caliber and their youth recruitment is without a doubt awful to be honest which makes it surprising that they've got so many good young talents particularly Arda Gula who is by far and away one of the best wonder kids in all of FM23 this year and I'll be hoping that we can develop him into some kind of star for us during this rebuild that actually relies on us not only giving him game time but also keeping him and not letting teams take him away from us which could be a very real possibility if he gets anywhere near that potential that he very clearly has. Physical attributes are awful but everything else is great and he's one of the best technically in the whole of FM23. Before we take a bit more of a deeper dive into the club though if you do enjoy this video and you want to help us out then please 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 smash that like button for us the more people that do that the further this video will get pushed the more eyes it will get on it and the bigger we can grow this channel subscribe if you haven't already as we push for 13,000 subscribers and drop a comment down below what rebuild you'd like to see next there's also a discord for football manager in the description and to those who are waiting for the long-term series to come back as opposed to these one-off rebuilds i think the next video we release on the channel will be the start of my new series so I'm very very excited for that but let's get into Fenerbahce. We are predicted to come first in the league although the league over the last few years has been dominated by a few different teams. We've had Trapanzapur recently, Besiktas, Istanbul, Besiktasir. Oh my god uh, just so you know before we get into this my pronunciations may be terrible please forgive me I'm not Turkish I'll do my best but just saying a few of those names I realise I'm in the deep end right now. Um, Galatasaray have won it, but shit task Galatasaray. And then the last time we won it was in 2013. So there's no clear dominance right now in terms of a team that's won it 10 years in a row. So it's definitely there and up for grabs for us to win if we can get this right. But currently, the Turkish league is ranked 19th in the world. That's lower than the Danish divisions, the Croatian divisions, which isn't what we want. Even the Greek divisions here, we would want to build up the Turkish league over time and hopefully get that reputation up. Our club vision is asking us for a fair bit, to be honest. They want us to win the league and be competitive in the Champions League straight away, whilst also growing the club's reputation, maintaining the club status in Turkey and working within the wage budget. So we've got all of that to focus on. Just to let you know, I do have the editor and the reason I've got that is basically I tick this at the start of every rebuild, become unsackable. That'll mean no matter what happens when we're simulating, we don't get sacked. So any kind of mess that we get the club in, if we do, we can take it over from there. It allows us to just focus in on the rebuild and not worry too much about each season and focus more on the long-term project because really we're not managing any of these games. We're more like a director, if you will, picking the right people for this team. So I always do become unsackable that's why you will see the editor up there. Tactics, I haven't decided on yet, so I'll have a look at that once we get used to the playing squad. The staff is okay, and in terms of our squad, let's have a look what we've got. 
Potential ability-wise, Arda Gula, Bayandir are our two best. Bayandir is a very strong goalkeeping option, so we're happy to have him. We've got this man here, who I'm going to call Ferdy, who's got a fair bit of potential. Lincoln, a former football manager wonder kid, is also part of our side, having recently joined from Santa Clara. The best player at the club is our goalkeeper, and then it's Enna Valencia, who is 32 and had a very good World Cup recently. And in terms of the age of the squad... It's all middle-aged. No one's too old, no one's too young either. I'd like to bring the age of that down slowly. If I count every single person, that's 34 people, which is a massive squad. I'm used to maybe 24, 25 people, so it's about time we start trimming the fat on this team, bringing in some players and doing some transfer business before we simulate the first season. So let's go ahead with that and see who we can bring in. Starting off with the outgoings, we've let one player go of any note. It's Serda de Sun, a striker who doesn't really fit the mold of what I'm looking for personally. He's a target forward, someone who's good in the air at six foot three, and he's 30 years of age. Now he is capped for the Turkish national team and did pretty well for Fenerbahce last season. Not just pretty well, but very well after coming in from the second division of Germany but we've decided to let him go to Mainz. I've got different ideas for what I want to do with the club. We also had Batshuayi, Joshua King and a Valencia as striking options so I didn't see too much room for Derson to get game time so we've decided to move him on and focus in on other players. But we didn't do that much in terms of incomings mainly because most of the players you saw in that Fenerbahce side have joined recently. They've had a massive window before we've taken over. So a lot of the players weren't ready to move on. There was also no point investing in a position where we just signed someone. However, I've picked up a few players that I was interested in. The first one is Aaron Martin, the left back from Mainz out in Germany. They took one of our players, so we took one of theirs. A very good left back option who's got some potential to grow and comes in as a good choice in the league we're in. I would assume he is one of the best left backs in the league now a very well-rounded player who's good at going forward 25 years of age I'm happy to bring him in and in an effort to lower the age of the squad I've decided to bring in a wonder kid that our scouts recommended Tobias Gulliksen he comes in from strong god set out in Norway but we have loaned him back there for the year because again we bought in a lot of players already this summer and there was no real place for Gullickson to fit in but 3.8 million is a good investment for a player who I'm hoping will develop into at least a 10-15 million pound player and maybe even become a regular player in our first team. Just to show you what I mean though Fenerbahce bought in a big bunch of players this year lots of players in this squad are people that have joined in the recent transfer window. I believe it's because they got a fair bit of money for Kim Min Jae. They then went on to buy a load of people with that money. The transfer business has kind of evened itself out, but hopefully we've improved the squad. So now it's time to simulate ahead and see how well we do. Just to let you know, I'm thinking of running a tactic that looks something like this. It's a 4 2 3 one tiki taka preset that the game has provided. If we look at our best 11, it looks like this. But realistically, I'm going to let the assistant manager pick whoever he wants. The only thing that I'm going to make sure happens is that no matter what, I want Ardagula playing. I am thinking long-term here, and even though he's not our best option in that position currently, and maybe with those physicals isn't ready for first-team football, I've got to give him the chance to develop. I want him to become the star of our club, so we're going to put him in and make sure he plays every game. So let's simulate ahead and see how we do in Season 1. And it might be time to panic a little bit, because our first season has not gone well. We are way off the pace in terms of a title challenge, predicted to come first. We finished third by a good 17 points there and we're nowhere even close to second place for shit task. Trabonzapur have taken the league home with them, but that is disappointing. That is not where I thought we would be. I'm thankful we've got the become unsackable thing on because without that, I actually think there's a good chance we would have lost our job this summer considering what the board were expecting of us. Did we at least perform in the Champions League? We didn't. We got knocked out in a qualifying round by the looks of it. Let's have a look who we lost to. Oh, we got knocked out by Dynamo Kiev. That is not good on our end. So we got knocked out of the Champions League, then went down into the Europa League where we were knocked out by Bodo Glimt. We then found ourselves in the Conference League and lost in the semi-final to FC Cologne. And then the Turkish Cup, I assume this is, semi-final. Lost to Galatasaray. What an awful season that was. Clearly a lot of work to be done here with Fenerbahce. We have qualified for the Conference League next season, so we're not going to be anywhere near 
the Champions League or the Europa League, which is massively disappointing. Our best performer was Osai Samuel, who is a right back, a Nigerian right back who used to play for QPR. I thought I recognised the name, I just couldn't remember where from. Um, but he was very good for us this year. In fact, he was excellent at right back and was probably our shining light of the season. Other than that, though, there's not that much to shout home about. I mean, João Pedro was our top goal scorer, playing 49 times and scoring 35 goals in all comps, 19 goals in the league, but his average match rating wasn't that good. Whether we can cash in on him this summer, I don't know. I, I know he did well, but he's just not my kind of striker. So I'll see what I do with him. But overall, this squad is clearly in need of a bit of a rebuild. That's what we're here to do. Arda Gula has developed a fair bit, which is nice to see, um, but he wants a new contract. We're going to have to sort that. Bad first season. Let's see if we can rectify it in the season two transfer window. And we've done the best we can with our transfers to try and completely move this squad around. I figured if we could shrink the squad down, it would help too, both in terms of just the quality of player that we have, in terms of selling off players that aren't very good and using that money for a real core team that can do well for us, as opposed to a massively, massively full squad. Also, I'm hoping it will help the dynamics because there'll be less players opting for game time, getting annoyed they're not playing, and maybe that will help us. But just prepare yourself. I'm going to have to run through these quickly. A lot, a lot of transfers have been done. Starting off with the sales, Batshuayi goes to Nantes for £4.1 million. Despite a good season for his last time out, I did say I wanted to let João Pedro go and we were able to move him back to Italy to Sassuolo this time for £6 million. Miguel Crespo goes to Lens in the French division for £3.2 million after a half-decent year for his last season. Mergin Barisha has gone to AEK Athens in the Greek division Divisions following alone at Augsburg where he just did not do anything at all so we've decided to sell him. Uruguayan international Diego Rossi has gone to New York Red Bulls in the MLS. We do make a loss on him but he wasn't used much at all last year. We've got a better replacement coming in so he's moved on. Miha Zeik has left on a free. This one was taken out of our hands. I actually wanted to keep him after a good season last time but he decided he wanted to leave. He was unhappy we didn't win the league in the first season. Dimit Dimitris Pelkash has gone to Spartak Moscow out in Russia on a free, was on loan at Hull last year, didn't do great and wasn't good enough for us. And finally, it's Mauricio Limos who's the next player to leave the club. This Uruguayan player leaves on a free deal to go to Las Palmas where he actually was bought from originally, just didn't play much at all for his last year, it wasn't great so he's gone too. And in an effort to focus in on quality over quantity, we have gone for wide option Daniel Ruiz. Yes, he might be young at only 21, but this Colombian was recommended by the scouts very highly. I already knew of him personally as well as a FM23 wonder kid. So I thought, you know what? Let's go for it. A very well-rounded player already. Even if he didn't grow again at 21, he would be great, but he does have a lot of room to get better. Coming in for only £1.5 million from Millioneros in the Colombian divisions. I'm over the moon with this one. I really think he could be a great player for us. I needed some depth at left back, so I've decided to bring in Dalbert on a free. A Brazilian left back from Inter Milan was let go. We've brought him in purely as a cover option. A brilliant signing, I think, was getting this man on a free. It's Gailene Shalali, a Tunisian 36 captain international. Definitely messed that one up. Who we've got on a free deal from ES Tunis in the Tunisian divisions where he was phenomenal last year. He's a bit more on the older side of what I'd like to sign normally, but the scouts were buzzing about him. The fact that we can get him for free too, I just thought he would be worth the investment. I didn't do this, but it looks like the club decided to activate a deal for Bruma, who was in on loan from PSV. Maybe it was a mandatory clause or something like that. Only played five times last year and now we've played £3.4 million for him and told him he's going to be a star player. So he's definitely going to cause some issues. I wouldn't have signed him personally. It's my fault for not keeping an eye on these loan clauses, but he's now in our team. We couldn't afford Joseph Zutalo, but we've managed to sign Bosco Zutalo from Dinamo Zagreb in the Croatian divisions. Four million pounds he costs us, but I'm happy with him. Coming off a good season last time out, a player who can cover a variety of positions, but definitely replaces Mauricio Limos in centre-back. And now we've got one more player that we bought in, and it's my favourite one of the bunch. And that is Matthias Arezo, the Uruguayan striker who I can't believe I haven't signed for about two years now in any of these rebuilds. But it was time to bring him back into the fray, into Fenerbahce, after a good season for Granada last year. We paid £13 million for him. In fact, it's a deal that could go up 
to 14 and a half. We did most of it on installments because we didn't have the money to pay for him. But he's a great striker, comes in as our best one. He's young too, and he is going to be the future of that line. My idea now is to just pick up key players in each position that can grow with the club as opposed to buying 10, 15 players a window. So Arezo, I think, definitely fits that bill. Because of the financial situation, the board aren't very interested in upgrading our facilities. Financially, we've still got a little bit to spend. We've got some left in the balance and there's still a massive debt that we've got to pay off. So I think finances are going to be a little rough over the next few years. But one thing I wanted to show you before we take a look at our results in season two is Kadir Demir. He's a wonder kid that's came out of our academy who looks like he could be phenomenal. At 16, he is electric in terms of his pace and we'll keep an eye on him to see how he develops. But he could be a massive part of our squad going forward. But let's see how this team can do in season two. I really don't know how to feel about this one. Uh, we finished third, which again is not good at all but we're closer to the top team in the league maybe they've just got worse maybe we've got better I can't really tell but we have managed to win the Turkish Cup so Fenerbahce gets some silverware for the first time in a while the last time they won that was 2012 so very happy to win that we beat Alanya Sopor in the final again apologies for the pronunciation but one thing I did notice earlier that I want to quickly show you is that the league itself has gone up in terms of the competition reputation in world football now to 12th place which means we get a few more European spots an extra Champions League spot and an extra Europa League spot so this time for finishing third we are going to be in the Europa League next season in terms of a conference league we got to the quarterfinals we're knocked out by Lille so very disappointed by that and again, I do think we likely would have been sacked without the unsackable thing on. But thankfully, we live to fight another day. But because our squad is so young, I'm hoping that we just get better and better as the years go on. But I just wanted to show you quick. Osai Samuel was our best player yet again. Shalali did great after coming in. But Ardagula has developed brilliantly this year. He scored 27 goals in all competitions and has became a really good player if you look at his attributes. Wanted by some big clubs, it will be hard to fight them off. But we'll do our best to keep him here and make him a big part of the team. And where is our striker, the main man, Matthias Arezo? Here you go. Average match rating wasn't great, but he did bag a fair few goals and hopefully he'll just continue to get better for us. At least we got some silverware, but it's time for us to push on now and win a league title. I've adjusted the tactic as well to help us out, just switching to a Gagan press because a tick attacker for the players we had just didn't seem to be working. Hopefully this will get some better results out of our guys and in season three, we can do better. But first, let's bring some players in. If you are enjoying this video, don't forget to smash the like button for us and subscribe for more content like this. And again, let me know in the comments who you'd like to see rebuilt next, but it's time for season three transfers. Our biggest sale was the man we accidentally signed last year, Bruma, going to FC Twente, 3.1 million. We make most of our money back, so I'm happy there. Ishmael Yuksek decided to leave the club. He has gone to Kayon Sapor for about 200 grand. Didn't play much at all over these last couple of years. Luan Perez, a strong centre-back option that we had over the years, has left to go to Brazil, to Palmeiras. He came from Brazil before. He's going back there. He was good for us, but I think we've signed a better replacement. Dalbert has left to CF Monterrey in the Mexican divisions for about a million. We got him on a free, played a fair bit. We make some profit, but again, I've signed a better player. And finally, Joshua King, the Norwegian international, has gone to Troy's in the French division. He wasn't good enough for us last year, and for that reason, we didn't renew his contract. Now, a lot of those players we looked at were very highly paid, and what we've been doing over the course of this rebuild is slowly lowering the wage budget at the club, so we have having more money to play around with. And we decided to really, really reinvigorate our midfield. I spoke about wanting core players to bring in for the next 10 years or so. And Andre Santos could certainly be that man. Signed for Chelsea in real life. But as far as FM's concerned, that update hasn't happened yet. So we're all good. I've got to admit, when I saw him, I did just think... Chelsea signed him in real life. He must be half decent. Sent a scout. They thought the same. And we've managed to pick him up for £7 million. He's one that we had on our radar for quite a while. We got the deal over the line. He joins from the Brazilian divisions and becomes a great midfield option. Again, in an effort of focusing in on quality over quantity, we have gone for Nordi Mukiel, who I think is a great signing for us. Former Leipzig player, went to PSG, played really well there actually, but was on the transfer list for £4.5 in. we went in for four and a half and they just said no actually seven and I just thought you know what we need a centre back 
I've just sold one. Mukiele would come in as one of our best as well. So I just went for it. He is now our new starting defender. Similar to signing Malcolm at left back, we just needed someone to fill the gap at right back as the backup option behind Samuel. And we have got Jan Kuto on a free coming in from Man City. Doubt he'll play much, but he's there as a backup. I don't know why I just called him Malcolm. His name was Dalbert. But anyway, moving on from that Brazilian left back, I mentioned that I think we'd improve that position enough to let Dalbert go. And the reason was we had signed Dauda Guindo from RB Leipzig. He's came in from RB Salzburg after a decent season for them. He was at St. Gallen the year before. I know he hasn't played much, but the scouts were talking about him in a positive light. There wasn't that many options in terms of who he could attract because believe it or not, Fenerbahce isn't an ideal prospect for many players to come to because we're not in the Champions League, because we're not winning the Turkish divisions. So we're having to be really smart with our money. But the fact that he's 21 and could get a lot better does bode well. And hopefully the Mali International can help lead that back line in that left back spot. Our best 11 would now look a little something like this. Bayern Deer in goal, Asai Samuel, Sotalo, Mukiele and Aaron Martin at the back. Back, Lincoln and Andre Santos, I didn't mean to click that, in the midfield, and then Arda Gula, Ifram Chan, Ruiz, and Arezo. So a lot of these people are players we've bought in, but I do actually want to give you a second to take a look at this man, Ifan Chan Cavecci, who I think has been at Fenerbahce for quite a while. Yeah, he's been here for a few years after signing from Bashik Shakir. But um, look at those attributes. I mean, technically, he's a very, very good player. I mean, set pieces, he's a whiz at. He got us a lot of assists last season, and hopefully he can keep that up. Just a big fan of him, so I wanted to point him out. Fenerbahce fans, is he a good player? Because he looks really good in FM terms. I simulated ahead. I came off of holiday on the 31st of May, and we are buzzing to see as we land on the home screen. We are now title champions of the division. I mean, I think we are. Everything looks okay. I believe there's only 34 games, but just to check, yes, we've got the champion sign in front of us. 78 points, much more than last season. Only just won the league over Japon Zippor. Goal difference made the difference for us. Same amount of draws, same amount of losses. We were runners up in the Europa League. I've literally just seen that now. Um, Wow, that is impressive. Right, let's take a look at that in a second. We were so close to some European silverware. The rebuild would have gone amazingly well if we'd done that. But so far, we've brought the league back to Fenerbahce after a decade. We've won two cup competitions because, again, we have won the Turkish Cup. And we were runners-up in the Europa League, losing the final to Roma. Very unlucky there. Did we beat anyone really good on the way through? We knocked out Newcastle with a 4-0 win. Fair play to us there. Quarterfinals, we took on Real Sociedad. So we've done well to get into the Europa League final. Very happy with that. But now we qualify for the Champions League, which is awesome to see. Arda Gula was our best performer and has continued to grow. And he's really coming into his own. Now he's in his 20s. Those physicals are going up a lot. He's also a bit of a leader. And I believe he was made vice captain recently. So that's great to see. A lot of our new signings doing very well too. The club is on the up and we're doing well. Tobias Gullickson, I haven't mentioned since we loaned him back out after signing him. But he's continued to do well for us. Played a lot this season and played well when he did. So the team is on an upwards trajectory. We've won the league now. It's time to go into the Champions League. We've been given a grand old budget of £4 million. Right, that's not very good. We've got to do a lot of work there because we've got two people leaving on a free deal and a player that I want to show you in a minute that we've bought in. But yes, we are losing Aaron Martin on an end of contract deal and our big centre-back Attila. So we need to replace these. Let's see what we can do with only four million to spend in season four. Just to show you the player that we have signed, this is Demba Juf, a centre-back that our scouts recommended. Now they're not so bothered about him. But he's an 18-year-old who we've got for free from Generation Foot out in Senegal. He looks all right. He'll come in as like our fourth choice centre-back. We didn't really make any sales, but we have bought in a few people just to help the squad depth situation out. Wendell comes in on a free. Lucas Holler comes in as a backup striker, which we haven't had since Enna Valencia retired or left the club, should I say. So hopefully he'll come in and score a few goals and just ease the pressure off of Arezo a little bit. And then to replace Attila Zalai at the centre-back position, we've managed to get Harry Maguire on a free. I was just looking for a centre-back. The scouts were basically saying Maguire is the one for us. Hasn't played much for Man U since Ten Hag's arrival. Available on a free deal. Look, this man cost 80 million at one point. He's still 32, so he's in his prime in theory 
for a centre-back. He looks like he should be a good player as far as the Turkish divisions go. So who knows, maybe this is the resurgence of Harry Maguire. Other than that though, we haven't bought anyone else in. Everything was a free deal, but I think the one that's going to make the massive difference to our club is this man, Kadir Demir. Now he was the player that we looked at in season one in our youth academy. I left him there between the ages of 16 and 18 because he just needs training at that point to develop. But now he's at the age where it's time for him to get match time. I went to him to basically go loan him out only to see the coach report is glowing about this man. Four star, five star potential. I think it might just be because, you know, he's homegrown, he's developed at the club. That's going to help his rating according to the coaches. But if we're looking at an inside forward or an inverted winger, physically, you're not going to get much better than that. Mentally, he's pretty much got everything you'd want in the areas you'd need him to. And then he's a good dribbler, good technique, a good passer as well, good first touch. I'm not saying he's world class just yet. But he definitely has the potential to do so. And he's probably, I don't want to say this, but I think he might be the best wonder kid we've ever had in a rebuild in terms of a youth academy development. Basically someone who's came out of our youth intake and it just looks like he'd be perfect and slot right in in that left side position. To have him, Ardagula, Altai Bayandir as some of our key players, that's great. I did want to keep a Turkish core if I could and I think Kadir Demir is going to help with that. We just need to make sure he doesn't leave to one of the big clubs. But now we can see how this team is going to get on in season four. And it's been a very good season for us again. The Champions League, we were knocked out in the league phase because it's now at the point where the Champions League looks like this instead of a group stage. We didn't do that great. We weren't rock bottom, mind you, but eight points after eight games, not awful. We got two wins against Tottenham and Club Bruges, but at least we're back in the Champions League and, you know, getting some money from that. And we'll have to take it from there. But the main thing is we won a treble. We won the Turkish Cup, the Turkish League by a big margin this time, which is great to see. Our competitors are starting to fall away a little bit. We also won the Super Cup, which I didn't know we won the year before as well. But we are slowly and surely adding some competitions to our cabinet. I think I got confused when I said we'd won the Turkish Cup before. Um, in fact, we'd won it, then lost it, and then won it again. So it was actually the Super Cup that we won last year, but we've now won all three. Kadir Demir was supposedly a big player in that. So very, very happy with these results. The Super League's reputation is improving as we get better too. It's now the 10th most reputable league in the world. I'd hope we could top Scotland and Austria by the end of this rebuild. But this is season four. We've only got one season left now to see how far this team can go. But Ardagula has developed amazingly well recently. This season, he was just one of the best. 7.5 average match rating. What a player. Already one of the best at the club. Actually, no. He's already the best player at the club and he's only 21. This man, I hope, will be with us forever. He's also a really strong leader in the team. He is now our captain as well. Captain at the age of 21, Altai Bayandir is our vice captain, who, by the way, unsung hero, has always been solid in the net, but we knew he would be. He is a great goalkeeper. But yeah, I'm just very happy with where the club's gone so far. Again, don't forget to like the video if you are enjoying. Mukiele doing well. Lucas Hola. Coming in on a free, did what was requested of him on the nine appearances when he did play. He scored three goals. So thank you for that, Mr. Hola. Daniel Ruiz is coming into his own. Kadir Demir is developing a hell of a lot. Jumping Reach has gone up to three. Let's go. Um, his coach report has started to balance out now that they've realised maybe he isn't the world's best player already. But he does have interest from three of the biggest clubs in world football. So we'll see if we can hold on. A great performance for an 18-year-old. Now 19, if he keeps developing... He will be great, but this team is on the up and we've got one more summer to make some transfer business. £12 million to spend. Let's go do it. Okay, here we are for the fifth season of transfers. You might see we're in November. Basically, I was holidaying until all of the contracts had expired and whatnot so I could show you our final team and I accidentally hit the indefinitely button. I went toilet, came back and we were way further in the season than I wanted to be, but the season has got underway only a couple months in to show you we are doing fairly well so far winning most of our games. The Champions League league phase though, we've won one, lost two. So we'll see if we get on there at all. I think we might have to accept we might get knocked out in the league phase again. But you know, at least we're becoming a Champions League team once more. But just in terms of who we did bring in, it was not a massive summer by any stretch. I just really wanted a quality deep line playmaker on the defend role. And we find this guy, Maxime Lopez, of Sassuolo who did very well we picked him up for 40 million pounds he's done all right for us so far it seems number seven for us a star player and valued at way higher than what we bought him for which is good because 
Our player valuations have been really bad this whole save. I think it's because of the league's reputation. Even Ardagula at his level was worth like 10 million. So hopefully as time goes on and we build up the club's reputation, we can start to see these transfer values going up. Then just to show you, we've let a couple of people go. The main one is this guy leaving on a free. It's Ferdi Kadioglu who had done well for us, but just wasn't it's really up to scratch for me. With Maxime Lopez coming in, I didn't think he was going to get too much game time. So we just let him move on. Um, and it leaves our team looking like this for our final season. If we went to best 11, there's a few people injured and whatnot right now, but it would be Bayandir, Osai Samuel, Mukiele, Harry Maguire, Bosco Sutalo, Maxime Lopez, Andre Santos, Arda Gula, Ruiz, Lincoln, and Arezo. The good thing about all of these is a lot of them are 25 and younger, and we've got a load of great young talent on the bench. Guindo, Gulikson, Diouf, Kadir Demir, Jan Kuto. We've also got the wonder man, Kan Kavecchi, on the bench. Very, very happy with the work we've done at the club so far. In terms of a financial situation, there's not much in the balance, but we've got a little bit of the debt gone. Not too much, to be honest. And I mean, the facilities are okay, but the board just aren't letting me upgrade anything because because of the situation the club is in. But now it's time to simulate our final season and see how we get on. And here we are right at the end of the year. And once again, I can see we've won the league by an even bigger margin this time. So I feel like we've became the dominant club in Turkey, winning it three years in a row and winning by a comfortable margin with a young team that's only going to get better. Look at the goal difference too. Very, very happy with this. Uh, but I haven't actually checked the other competitions, hoping for maybe one of the other cups. A uh, Champions League, if we made it out of the league phase, that would be great. And we actually did. Okay, we actually did make it out of the league phase. Let's just take a look at this. So we won the Turkish Cup. We lost the Super Cup. I think the Turkish Cup is a little bit more important, but that's good to see. We've won that three times. We won the Super Cup twice and the league title three times. But the Champions League, we made it to the round of 16. So did we auto-qualify for that? Or did we beat someone in a knockout round? Let's have a look. So in the league phase, we finished 22nd with 10 points. We won three matches. Salzburg, Stromgodse and Dinamo Zagreb. Feel like we've got a bit lucky with those three games. So yeah, we did what we expected. We won those. We ended up getting into the knockoff playoff round. That'd be right. Yes. Yes, we did. Okay. And we beat Inter Milan 5-3. So we knocked out a pretty big side there. This is a club that, I mean, are they dominating the Serie A? I don't know. They have. They've won the Serie A three years out of the five that we've done this simulation and we knocked them out of the Champions League. So we'd be buzzing with that. A 2-1 win to knock them out. And then round of 16, we get drawn against Barcelona, who to be fair to them, absolutely smash through us. I wish we'd won the Europa League in that early season, but to win three league titles, cups and make us a Champions League side with a good young team and kind of replace the old crop. I'm very happy with that rebuild. We've bought back some trophies to our side. Our players have got better and better. As a final note, how good did Arda Gula become? Well, the answer is very, very good. I mean, 22 years of age, I'm not sure how much more he'll develop. His valuation is criminally low for a player of that caliber. His physicals are now in a good place at least, and he's wanted by two big clubs, so we'll see if we can hang on to him. But I'm buzzing with this. A great rebuild that got off to a terrible start, but we managed to sort it out, and there we go, guys. We have rebuilt Fenerbahce. Let me know what you thought of a rebuild down below and who you'd like to see next. Subscribe for more, but most of all, have a great day, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.